So, where are the other students? Bilal submitted the homework. What happened to the rest? <laughs> they will join soon, okay. Where is Jotisma? Yesterday he told me he has some confusion in ability. So others have you tried to make it a real trip? I haven't checked your one. Am I audible to you guys? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Ma'am, I'll oh. submit the email or uh, homework after the class. Ah, oh, okay. Wait, wait. Anyone has any doubt in your real tree? Oh, today is Deepa's birthday. Happy birthday, Deepa. Ma'am. Did you say thank you? Dula said it's your birthday. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So, where is the birthday cake? Oh, Ma'am, we didn't bake a cake. E, e cake. Send us e cake. Ma'am, what? E cake. E cake, e party. That's a good idea. So, anyone has any confusion in a real tree? Yes, could you please do a five minute revise of a real? Okay. <coughs> Okay. I'll just start from here. It's already written. So, so what is a real tree? A real tree is your height balancing tree. Okay, it's a binary search tree, but it's also a height balancing tree. Uh, normal in normal binary search tree, what happens? We don't care about the height, okay? Height means uh, there might be some difference between left and right. But the main property is that left side means left subtree, all the nodes should be less than your root node and all the nodes in the right subtree should be greater than your root node. So in avial tree, it follows the same property that means it will follow the BST property apart from that it will also maintain a height so for every tree every node in the tree should maintain the height minus one zero or plus one okay so if any of the node 
is not maintaining that balance factor then we need to perform certain operations or rotations to balance out the balance factor so how we calculate balance factor balance factor is nothing but height of your left subtree minus height of your right subtree okay so for suppose first obviously we will start from uh, root node 63 will be your root so height of this node for 63 is 0 minus 0 because no children left subtree also 0 and right subtree also 0 so 0 minus 0 is less 0 so next node is 9 so I just added 9 here right so now you check the balance factor for node 63 your balance factor is 1 why 1 there's 1 left subtree and 0 right subtree that means 1 minus 0 is 1 correct so now for node 9 it's 0 because there is nothing there so it's just 0 so next I added 19 so for 19 we 19 will go where it will be on the right side of your node 9 why 19 is greater than 9 so we will put in right side because it's a binary search tree so now again you check the balance factor now for 63 the balance factor is 2 how we calculate the height is just longest part from the root to the leaf node right so it's 2 minus 0 because there is no right subtree so 2 minus 0 is 2 and for 9 it's minus 1 why because there is no left subtree so min 0 minus 1 is minus 1 so in this case what we have done see we have inserted right side right side of your left subtree right so in this case to balance out the um, factor balance of the tree we are going to perform LR rotation so in any FVLT we have four types of rotation one is LL rotation one is RR rotation one is LR and one is RL okay. LL means when we add something in the left of left okay so it is also known as your right rotation why right rotation? Suppose this is your subtree. I am adding to the left of left. So in this case, your balance factor is 2 for this node. Correct? So what I am going to do? I am just going to pull this one downward. Okay? So this one will be like this. So since it's a clockwise direction, clockwise rotation, means you are just performing in the right hand side so it's just right rotation okay now what is r when we add something some new node into the right side of right subtree right of right okay so in this case we perform a left rotation so this r these two are just single rotation right of right means suppose this is our node i'm adding somewhere here Okay, it's again minus 2 balance factor. Why? Because left subtree is completely nil. 0 minus 2. Height of right subtree is 2. It's minus 2. So I'm just going to pull it downwards here. And it's an anti-clockwise rotation. That means I just perform a left rotation. Okay, it's just single rotation. Now what is LR rotation? When we add something, some new node to right of your left subtree okay in this case see this is i have just added right of your left subtree your parent is 63 right so i just added into the left side again for left subtree i added into the right side so this is called your lr rotation that is right of left so in this case what we do we will first simply just do a uh, first we will do one perform uh, perform one rotation there we okay this, this step continues actually two steps okay 
So one step is sixty-three. So this is the case sixty-three. It's become too small. Okay, anyways. So I added nineteen here, and balance factor is two. So first, what I'll do? First, I'll perform a. Which side I have to pull first? Suppose this is the zero. First, in this case, you just go to a one node below. That means first you will perform a rotation here. That means it will be anti-clockwise. Okay, anti-clockwise means what rotation? It's a left rotation. Okay, so sixty-three. Then you pull nineteen here, and nine will come here. Okay, I, I just showed here as well. See. So first, I'll perform a simple left rotation because it's a clock, it's a anti-clockwise. So in this case, nineteen will come here and nine will come down. But the key is still not balanced, right? It's still two. So after that, I'm going to perform a right rotation. So for right rotation, I'll simply push it down here. So now your nineteen will become your parent node, and sixty-three and nine is your children. So it's still uh, maintaining the BST rule. Right side is greater than parent, and left side is smaller. Okay. Now next node is is LR rotation clear now? First, in this case, if it's a LR rotation, first go to a node below the balance. Okay, here. So two, we have unbalanced. So for one, we will perform a single left rotation. Then we will perform a right rotation to the full tree. Okay. First here, then in the full tree. So this is your final LR rotation. That means LR rotation is divided into you can say left, then right rotation. LR rotation clear? Okay. So next is our node is twenty-seven. So twenty-seven is greater than nineteen. It will be added into the right subtree. Again, it is less than twenty sixty-three. Will be added into the twenty-seven. Means right there. So balance factor is just balance out. No need to do anything. So next node is. Our eighteen, so eighteen is less than nineteen, then it's greater than nine. So just add it into the right of left subtree. Now we need to balance again. Just add it hundred eight. It will come here. Next node is ninety nine. We'll add here because it's less than one zero eight. Again greater than nineteen. So next is eighty one. Okay. The moment I added eighty one. Okay, sorry. So now I just added eighty one here. So after adding eighty one, you can see the balance factor for this node is two. Why it's two? It's again left minus right two minus zero right sub is zero. So balance factor is two here, right? And for this one, balance factor is minus two. Why? It's one minus one two three, so it's minus two. Again, for this one, it's minus two. Why? 
it's 2 minus 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. Now our first imbalance is at this position, right? So we just added this 81 to the left of left subtree for this node. Okay, you are just going to consider this node for in this case, it's just left of left. So I'll simply perform a LL rotation. That means I'm going to pull this out here, a right rotation clockwise. So after pulling this here, your 99 will be the new node. And 108 and 81 will be the children. Now you check the balance factor again. So after doing this, the height is balanced for all the nodes. Okay, so this is your desired ability. Then I gave you this homework. To perform the ideal play. Okay, so in this case, uh, in LR rotation, there is a change. So, for that, I also give you another example where I just added 1 to 8. That means I am simply going to add 8 nodes one by one. So, first I added 1, then minus, uh, then 2, then 3. After this, balance factor is minus 2 for here and I perform RR rotation and 2 becomes here. So, and so on. So, the main thing was... <coughs> Here, okay. Here means after adding your uh, six, the, its three is <coughs> imbalance. To balance out this, what I did, I perform a <coughs> right right rotation. So first, I just pull it here. So in this case, this three, this node three, become the root of 2 and 4 becomes parents. Why it's simple RR? Because it's just right off right. So I just shift it there and 3 becomes the new node of 2. So similar thing is going to happen for this homework as well. So I guess yesterday uh, Neeraj was confused about that thing which one he said it just worked correctly. It did just that. Yeah, when you perform that thing, the child of one node can become the child of another node. Okay? Is it okay for MLT? You guys just do it once again. It will be somewhat similar to this one. <coughs> So I'll just move to the next topic. Is it clear again? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. So for reference, just remember this one to eight. You can try this one, then you will see. In this case, when I perform the RR rotation, I pull this to here, who becomes our parent, and this tree becomes the child of two here. And this remains 5. <coughs> so similar thing is going to happen in this case also. <coughs> okay, so I move to the next topic. Okay, okay I want... Okay, okay. Uh, for before that, I want to say the time complexity for all the operations insertion, deletion, and search is log n. Okay, uh, in most of the binary tree, we have seen it's log n, means it mainly depends on the <coughs> height of your tree. So, for binary tree, the height is log n. Okay, remember I explained, suppose. In normal binary tree, it goes like this, right? That means what? In every level, we are just increasing the number of nodes. So in this case, 1, in this case, 2, here is 4, for full binary tree, suppose, and it becomes more and more. That means we can represent it just 1 by 2 power n, where n will be like this. So this node, you can say the height of the tree is log n. 
<coughs> for reference, you can see the derivation is available for your binary tree. <coughs> How we get log in from this expression is just given in the uh, binary key. Uh, sorry, binary search is binary search. So there I have already explained how we got this login thing. <coughs> so height of a tree for binary key is login. Okay. <coughs> sorry. So today I wanted to start heap data structure. So heap is a very important data structure. Uh, it's a tree based and it is mainly a <coughs> complete binary tree. <coughs> there is a heap sort that I just need to bring some water. So what is heap? It's just a special case of binary tree. It's a complete binary tree. <coughs> so in case of heap, uh, it also has some properties. There are mainly two types of heap. One is max heap and one is mean heap. And it follows complete binary tree. What is the complete binary tree? What are the properties? A complete binary tree. <coughs> your heap data structure can have like different many others, but very common one is your binary heap, and it's a tree based one. All, all the heaps are tree based. This this binary heap is the most famous one and most widely used. Okay, so can you tell me what are the properties of complete binary tree? It's a complete binary tree. It's not BST. In BST, we follow the root left and right thing. Here, it's a complete binary tree. So, the property of complete binary tree is what? Ma'am, every nodes are completely filled. Yes, correct. Um, means, uh, except the last. The last, uh, uh, last, uh, last level. Yes, very correct. Other not possible. That's that's correct one. Very good. Apart from that, there is another property. Remember, all the nodes are as far as left possible. Okay. Uh, uh yes, ma'am. <clears throat> yeah. So in complete binary tree, all the levels are full, except the last level it can be full or it can be like half done but still it should be as left as possible okay so we have two types of heap <coughs> one is max heap other is mean heap so what is max heap and mean heap <coughs> so in case of max heap your parent your parent is better than all the children this is max heap. See, this is 9. Now, what are the children of 9, 5 and 4? And both are smaller than 9. Or you can say parent is greater than children 5 and 4. Now, for this case, for 4, the two children are 1 and 3. And you can see the parent is greater than 1 and 3. Again, for this one, it has just one node and it's... <coughs> Four, uh, 2 and 4 is greater than 2. So, this is the condition for max heap. All the parent is greater than children except for the root node. Why root node? Because there is no parent for the root. Okay? <coughs> and mean heap is your opposite. Here, your parent Here your parent is 
nest in your children. Except saying, except. There is no, but you can see the look <coughs> is the parent of all. And just notice for this note, two children, and it's smaller than the two children value two and three. Next for this note, again four five is greater than two, and for this this note, nine is greater than three. <coughs> so it's very easy to remember. Max it means parent greater than children. Min hit means parent less than children. Now you can see you can compare it with an array. If I, I tell you like arrange the numbers in an array, you can see in case of max hit, the root node will be the maximum number in an array. Okay. And in case of mean hit, the root node will be the minimum number in an array. So I can tell you, we can represent it I have to clear this part now. Okay. So, your max hit is what? It's two types. Max and win. Okay. <laughs> For max hit, what I can say, parent is greater than children. Okay. And here, parent less than children. Now suppose an array, we can represent a tree with the help of an array. In normal tree also, we can just for any tree, any binary tree, we can represent with the help of a tree. How? Suppose the numbers are like So suppose this is our A and we can represent it as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So how can we just build any tree or you can see just max it in this case. Just normal way. First I'll add the first, first number in the array. Then I'll put in the second one. Then we I'll move to the next node. 40, it's just normal for any any tree. Okay, 45. <coughs> then we have 35. You will just fill up the notes level by level. You don't leave anything. Okay, you cannot just start from right side. You always have to go from top to bottom then left to right one by one okay next we have 10 and then 9 okay so you can just number it like 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 <coughs> okay here i have already written in a max Form, but uh, I did that because I want to show the insertion process later. So this is your max hit. So for any tree, we can represent with the help of an array. What we do, we simply take one number at a time and put it in the start from the root node. Then we just fill it up from top to bottom, then left to right. Okay. In case of max hit, since it's a complete binary tree all the nodes will be as left as possible okay for min hit it will be the 
opposite one. <coughs> mean him, how it will be? Here, all the numbers should be greater than its parent. Okay. You cannot just add here and there. You have to go from left side only. So, in this case also, you can see this tree can be represented in the form of Array. So it was 10, then 15, 19, 20, 30, 25, 29, 23, 40, and 35. We can just number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here you can just see if it is correct. Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So is this clear? After this portion, hit max hit and min hit. What is a hit? Hit is simply a three based data structure which is a complete binary tree. That means all the levels should be full and possibly for the last level, it should can be exception, but all the leaf nodes should be as left as possible. Okay. And when you want to add any <coughs> heap tree or any tree actually, you will always go from top to bottom, then left to right. Then we can represent it as a array as well. You can just number it down. <coughs> so now we have some algorithm for max hit creation and insertion. So before that, can you guess why we need hit? Can you tell me any applications? I guess one application I have already mentioned before. Location for dynamic memory location we use it. Then for some particular implementation, I told it is better. It was priority key. Remember, I told you if we implement priority key uh, queue with the help of it, it takes better complexity it gives you login times and login time is obviously better than o and another's so for inserting a heap what we need to do first just create a new node at the end of the heap assign new value to the node compare the value of child new then swap them okay i just directly go Suppose I take the same field, 17, 5, 1. Okay. Suppose in this case, I want to add another node. Okay. And I want to add 60 here. What I need to do? First, always add it from the last. Okay. Whenever you want to add any new node, you have to go from the last. That means you have to add it. To the last 60 means leaf node will be added as a leaf first. 
So in this case, where you want to edit, see this 45 is already full. You have to fill it up level by level, right? 45 is already full. That means you have to edit in the 35. Now in this case again, where you want to edit, left or right, right? You cannot put it right side. Why? To fulfill the condition for complete binary tree, which should be as left as possible, you have to add it to the left side of your new node. Correct? You cannot simply just add it anywhere. You have to maintain the condition of complete binary tree. Correct? Now see what happens once you add it. This is the first step. You will first add it as a leaf node. Okay? You just create a node here at the leaf and you just add a value here. Now you check whether it's can satisfying the condition of maxif. What is the condition for maxif? The parent should be greater than 35. Okay? Is it the case here? The parent is 35 and 60 is less. It's not satisfying the condition of maxif. So in this case, what we are going to do, we will simply swap the value with each other. Now, that means, what will be the value? The 60 will be added here and 35 will be swapped here. So, 60 will come here and 35 will come here after swapping. Okay. So, now you see, again, again check the max property. Okay. Now, you see what's the parent of 60. The parent of 60 is 50. Again, it's not satisfying the condition of maxif. Why? Because parent should be greater than this. So what we are going to do? We are again going to swap this value 60 with 50. Now your 60 will be swapped here and 50 will come here. Okay. So after swapping, the value will be here. 60 will come here. And 50 will come here. Okay. Now you again check the condition of maxif. What is the parent of 60? It's 70. So 70 is already greater than 60. That means it is satisfying the condition of maxif. So now this is your proper max shape after adding a number 60. So this process where we check the max hip thing and swap the values. This thing is known as hippify. Okay. Whenever the condition is not satisfied, we just do some swapping thing. Even creating while creating the uh, heap, max heap, the numbers can be in a random order. Then we need to do hippify. That means we need to just swap the values so that we can get a value. Okay. So this is how we add number. Is this clear? How we add items? <coughs> Is it clear? For adding okay, for adding item in the max hit. Here we just add 60 to our max hit. So first we will start from the leaf node. Okay, in, in the algorithm also written, create a new node at the end of the heap, assign the new value to the name, compare the value of the child node with its parent. If the value of parent is less than child, then swap them, then repeat the thing until the heap property holds. Okay, so this is the simple process. Now you see how we can represent, suppose I also mentioned, right, we can represent with the help of uh, array, right? Now, if you want to add something here, 60, I just added. Okay, 60, I added, right? Now, I need to typify this thing. So, how we are going to do this thing? Okay, I, I, I just added this like this. But programmatically, when we do, we cannot just do it in a tree structure, right? We are going to 
use arrays. So what will be the process? Suppose this is your array A, A okay. So how we can find the uh, location of or, or the value of your parent? How? It's simply I divided by 2. Okay. This will be your parent. For any node, the parent will be I divided by 2. Just take the flow value. So suppose you want to find the value of 60. First, we added 60 here, right? <coughs> I'll just take this example. What is the parent of 39? The value of 39 is what? Index of 39 is 5. 5 divided by 2. What is 5 divided by 2? Take the flow value. 2.5. Right. 2.5. So, we will take the flow value. That means 2. And what is 2? It's 40. So, for 39, which is in the 5, that is A, AI is equal to 39. That means it's 5 here. The parent for this node is just I divided by 2, which is flow. That means I divided by 2 means 5 divided by 2, 2.5, it's 2. So 40 is your parent of this node. Okay. So programmatically, when you want to implement a heap or max heap, we are going to find out the parent of any node like this. It will be the I divided by 2. For any node, you take any node. Suppose this for 10. Okay. 10, what will be the parent for, for here? 10 is here. How will you know what is the parent for 10? It's simply 7 divided by 2. 7 divided by 2 means 3.5 maybe. 3.5 then you take the um, flow value. It will be 3. So parent of 10 equal to 45. This is how you will know what is the parent of which. Okay. The first one will always be the root. Just remember that. In an array, the first node will be your root node. Root node never have any root uh, parent. So, no need to find a parent for this. Then, for the rest of the numbers in an array, you can find the parent of any node by simply doing this i divided by 2 formula. Is it clear? Is it clear for, for array, the case of array, how we are going to find out the parent of any node? Yeah, good. Okay, it, this meeting is going to end very soon. So, I'll just end it here. I hope insertion is clear. The deletion part I'll show in next class. I can repeat the insertion process again. So, I'm just going to stop sharing. Let me take that again. So, I hope FVL3 is clear to everyone. So everyone try the homework. Try to do it. It's not that hard. Just need to balance out. Means find the balance factor. Okay, is it clear for everyone? FVL3 now? Okay, okay, okay. I'm ending the meeting then. Thank you all. See you in the next class. So everyone do that homework, okay, for the real tweet.